Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for the Plus channel. Uh, this has come as a request from a number of subscribers. Uh, I've already shown you how to paint the Rubik Marines uh, for Thousand Suns, uh, but in this video we're going to take on the Zangors. I've been dreading painting these because they're a, a real uh, rainbow of different colours uh, and, and techniques and so on. I've had a go at painting, so I'm quite happy with the, with the results here, and I thought I'd turn it into a video as another resource for you here on the plus channel. They are almost entirely different to Rubik Marines and so it's not really a case of painting the same thing. It's an entirely different uh, style for these, different colours being used and techniques and so on. So in this video I'm going to show you from start to finish. Uh, let's start with this one. This is the one we're going to use and then here's one I painted earlier on. I'm going to zoom in so you can take a look at the results that you can expect. So that's the model, this is the one we're going to paint and then this is the result, I haven't finished the base on this guy but other than that he's finished so let's just give you an idea of the kind of results you can expect here loads of different colours going on, the blues and purples I'll show you how to do all the armour uh, this bit here as well, it's the same uh, on this one it's all the orange fur coming out of the back these horns on top are all different parts to this here uh, to consider but in this episode here I'll take you from start to finish so uh, we'll cover the basing uh, and then we'll work our way through all these different colours and the techniques needed to achieve these results. If you like the look of these angles here I'm really excited about getting these done. These, these are the last units. The angles are the last uh, units to get painted up before this Thousand Suns army is complete so uh, in this video here we'll show you from start to finish how to uh, achieve the same results that you see just here. So, I, I've copied the artwork that you get on the box here, as much as possible, I mean, they're virtually the same. There's a few little things I haven't done just to save time, I'm trying to develop techniques uh, for my videos uh, that are as effective on time as possible, but at the same time getting nice results. There's a few little things, little tiny details I haven't, I've done away with here. Um, but other than that, it's virtually the same kind of results you're expecting to get. So uh, the colours generally the same as well. So that's him. What we'll do is cover your preparation. So I put, I glue up the model, stick him onto the base as well. Then I do the the basing here, which is just my sand and stones. Uh, there's videos on the regular channel for how to do that. And then uh, I spray first the base here in the brown, which is the leather brown here by Army Painter. So spray it in brown first, and that seals it all in. And then to get a head start in this, uh, and again, I, I really encourage you to do this, I've shown most of my videos, I do some kind of base color uh, to get you a head, and this will save you loads of time, because gold is an awkward color. Uh, I spray it in gold. And Games Workshop do uh, the Retributor armor. It's exactly the same preparation, actually, as the Rubik Marines, same process. So. Uh, spray the base, that does the base edge for you, the rim, that's the correct colour that we'll finish with, so not looking to disturb that. Uh, it gives you the dark shade that you need, and then we can just put the highlight straight on top, and then the gold there will help give you a good base for any silver, and then especially all the gold trim is already in gold, so it's going to save you loads and loads of time. So that's that, and then to help the inks and the washes flow onto this metallic, uh, I give it a light spray. 
and make sure you don't just spray like on top you've, you've got to get all the way around because anywhere, anywhere where you miss with the varnish uh, you're going to struggle to get that uh, wash to sit properly just a regular purity seal from going to workshop give it a coat of that uh, all the way around and then that'll help the washes uh, just spread out nice and evenly uh, as you put them on so that's your preparation and, and just by doing that uh, you're going to save yourself loads and loads of time and you can make the gold look nice because it's just sprayed on and you're ready to go straight into washes on top of the gold so it's going to save you tons of time and then gold's a nice light color see other standard colors like the blues and so on they'll paint on nicely onto this color here and it'll go straight over it uh, usually in just one coat will be fine so it's a good base color to start off with and uh, it's going to save you tons of time so that's your preparation and uh, i've done that i've got if you're familiar with the list I've got loads of angles to paint. I've got tons of them. So I'm, I really am trying to work on a technique that can uh, get my army on the way uh, to being finished. So I don't want to get bogged down with these. As beautiful as models they are, I still want to make good progress on them. I've been working on uh, batches of them here. They're sort of at the two thirds of the way through stage, these ones. Uh, but really happy with the progress that's been made. So uh, we'll cover all the materials now. Uh, my hands are all like this, by the way. I've been rebasing my Necrons, the Necron Warriors, on the smaller bases, and I've been uh, cutting them down, putting them on the new sized uh, bases, and then spraying them up. So that's what that, that's where the grey comes from. Um, so uh, dead grass. Then this is the flocks. Then Games Workshop dead grass. Uh, just here, this is for this desert finish landscape. Uh, then the grass tufts, random sized ones, and then the, the pack of the regular sized ones. It's a, re a real nice finish as well. Uh, so that's those. Uh, to glue them on, use PVA, and, and PVA I put on the base earlier as well to stick the stones on. So PVA glue. And the sprays are already covered. Purity seal, which you'll use to uh, spray this, getting it ready, and also later on. Uh, to the final varnish and spray finish off, retributed armor for your gold, and then the armor painter at uh, leather brown for your base. Then for colors, there's loads of colors for Zangos, because <laughs> the, just the way they are, they're just a real uh, spread of different colors. So, uh, washes then. Uh, this is Druk, Drukari Violet. Just checking the yeah, Drakari Violet, big purple one. Uh, you won't use that much, but I bought a big one. Uh, Seraphim Sepia, uh, Agrax Earth Shade, and then uh, the Drakenoff Nightshade as well. It's the blue, which you'll need. Uh, then Metallics uh, Iron Breaker, Silver. Uh, the Rune Fang Steel as well. Uh, then uh, it's the old burnished gold. Uh, it's called Auric Armor Gold now. It's the new colour. Uh, then we have uh, Celestra Grey. I use that for the Thousand Suns. Um, I'm going to use that here uh, for uh, these Zangors as well. Then a spread of blues. Uh, techless blue, that's the key colour, that is sort of the uh, the Zangor's colour, so techless blue. Then to highlight that, you can add white to it, but to highlight it I'll use loafing blue. You can use it straight from the pot as you highlight later on. Uh, I'm going to mention Thousand Suns blue here. Uh, you, you don't have to use this. I've What I've done with my kits here is inside the, the box, the 40k box, you do get the uh, Age of Sigma bits here so the swords and shields I've mixed those in with these squads so that if I and the, and the blades as well you see the blades here so if I want to declare them in my list as having Zangor blades I can kind of justify that I've got sort of a mixture of weapons uh, if I want to go for the auto pistols and chain swords I've got a mixture of them uh, mixed in with the units as well so they can be either or I suppose on a mixture I'd like the swords and shields as well and then they got like a five plus in one save you know maybe that could be represented by the shields so uh, I use the Thousand Suns Blue to paint the insides of the shields, not the back, I'll just leave that metallic, uh, but the front of the shield design, I use the Thousand Suns Blue, uh, and then that matches in with the rest of the Thousand Suns army. 
If you're not going to have shields on your kits, you want to go for the regular uh, auto pistols and chainsaws, you, you don't need the Thousand Suns. Bloops, it's up to you. But uh, I'll just keep that out of there. That's just to mention that. Uh, then uh, Dawnstone Grey. Uh, Xerxes, or Xerus Purple. Corn Red. Ceramite White. Uh, Flash Gits Yellow. Uh, Blazing Orange, which is Troll Slayer Orange now, the new colour. Uh, Shabti Bone. Uh, Scorpion Green, uh, which is uh, Moot Green now. Uh, Scorched Brown, which is Rhinox Hide. And then uh, the old Snot Green, which is now Warp Stone Glow. So loads of colours in here. I got, there's not much I can do about it. <laughs> it's just, but they're just a very colourful unit. And you get some great colours on these. But very bright. They are a beautiful unit. And it is worth uh, and incredible models. Um, so it is worth making the effort to get these looking right. But that's the colours uh, that you'll need. Okay, so uh, we're going to make a start then. Uh, usually the base first. So uh, we're just going to highlight this up. And get ready. So I've got an old brush here. This is an old uh, worn out wash brush. I I'm going to damp it a little bit. A super dry brush just can tend to clog up and not go so well. So a slightly damp brush is quite handy. Slightly damp. Uh, and then it's just a case of scrubbing the brush along the top of these stones. And I want to go as neat as I can and not get any onto the rim of the base. I want to keep that neat and not have to repaint it at all, and that'll save me time later on. I'm just scrubbing the brush on there, picking out the highlight. As soon as you feel it starts to dry up too much, it goes too cloggy, then you can just uh, damp it down with just a very small amount and it just lets the paint flow on a bit better, but still lets you do that dry brush. So just scrubbing it over. Like so, that's done. I'm going to immediately go into the Ceramite White. I'm just scrubbing it out on my, watch, on my uh, pad here with a tiny little bit of the Shabti Bone just to make an off white colour and use this as the final highlight. So I'm not looking to cover as much, but I'll go as strong on this one. I'm just sort of skimming it over the top here, but you can see it picks out. That nice and strong. This is looking good. And carefully around the feet. I'm going to be painting over that anyway if you make a mistake. And that's that highlighted up nicely. So that's that done. So that's that highlighting finished. The next stage uh, is before we come on to colours, I want to put a wash Seraphim Sepia uh, onto anywhere where there's going to be gold. So you could quite rough with this one because uh, the gold and silver is all sort of very. Uh, intricate there, but wherever the gold is, you want to put that on. So uh, let's say, let's move this out of the way. So, like the chainsaw, for example, just going to flood that into there. These armbands here, uh, the pistol, where it's uh, you know, you've got silver going on, and then you've got the gold as well. Uh, at this stage, I'm just going to flood the hole of that pistol there, not worry about what's what because you can pick out the silver anyway. Around his chest plate here is gold. I'm not going to bother with the, with the top part of his body here because there's no gold. There's no need to shade that. Uh, there's a bit of a sort of a gold front headpiece here, partly in gold, so I'm going to shade that in. Fire pads, again the chest plate that runs all the way around, the dagger, the end of the dagger, and these fire pads here. Pick those out. All the way down. And that's about it. So you encourage you, I've been doing these in batches of 10. Uh, and it's quite manageable, you make pretty good progress. I encourage you to do these in batches. You can imagine do all the basing, then you do your uh, the gold or the uh, serum sepia wash and just do it all in stages. But that's that wash on there now. So I'm gonna let that dry entirely and then we'll start picking out uh, some of the base colours. So uh, the process that we're going to use in this uh, is uh, base colours. I've just done a bit of a, a wash on there first, just to save a bit of time, because I've been able to put it over quite generally. Uh, but then we'll go into base colours, then we'll go into washes, 
and then we'll uh, pick out the final highlights. Just the usual process, we just interrupted it there, putting a wash on quite early just to key that gold in nicely. So that's that done, and that's dried. So we can start with the base colours now. Uh, it's not too important as to what colours you go for uh, in what order. Celestra Grey I've got here, I'm just going to paint the base colour for these horns. Uh, so just wherever those horns are you're just looking to fill them in and you do want to be neat at this stage, so I want to be neat down here because I don't want to go onto the gold uh, face plate that he's wearing or it, whatever it is, this beast uh, and then just fill that all out so nice and tidy and then working all the way up and there's actually the tips of these are actually a, a gold, golden tip, an armoured tip to these horns. So I'm just going to not go all the way to the very end, but just where it's marked. Like so. Like that. Strange colour. Uh, it's, I think it's about appropriate though for a result that we're looking to get. So working the way around and get that all painted up. This is the only area, the horns is the only area uh, for this Celestra Grey. So I'll work around the front here and then around the back I need to get done in this grey as well. So that's that done. Next I'm going to do the Rhinox Hide here, the old Scorched Brown. Uh, so that's the base colour I'm going to use for this uh, plume here coming out of the back, this sort of mane coming out here. Uh, that he has. So, just going to water this down a little bit. I'm just using a size uh, 2 brush here uh, from the artist Opus brushes. Uh, but just with a decent tip and just uh, water the paint down a little bit. I want the pigment strong enough so it just does one coat. And I'll, I'll, I'll push it right down into the crevice there because I, do, I don't want to have uh, a seam of, of gold base colour coming through, so I do want the two colours to overlap, the blue and the brown. So it doesn't matter if you go on to where you're going to paint the blue a little bit. I've just thickened that paint up a little bit just to make sure it just does one coat on there. It's great to see these colours start to go on, it's a bit daunting when the whole thing's in gold. And again just stuffing the brush right in there. Like so. And then uh, on this one, they're not all the same, but the little tassels here uh, at the bottom of this uh, loincloth he's got on, uh, at the bottom of those tassels I'm going to do uh, in this brown as well. And again, it doesn't matter if you go into the cloth a little bit because you want the colours to overlap. Let's go around there and then just make sure I get from behind here as well and then working the brush in to make sure it's all shaded. This is your shade really. That's that done. Next is corn red and again not all of these some of them have uh, like the plate mail chain mail sort of effect but this one has the loincloth which I'm going to paint in this corn red colour. So I want it to be nice and tidy. Maybe zoom in here so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Let's give you an idea because it's quite intricate here, um, so I'm just being neat as possible. But it should be quite logical where the cloth is. Uh, it does run up the side here, so I'm going to just go neat as I can in between that. So I'm saying you want a brush with a good tip, and then just a bit up the side here. Can't really, doesn't really matter, and then nice and tidy along there, like so. Spin it round and remember that the cloth does go behind. It's underneath. Nice and tidy. And the cloth does drape down uh, here at the back as well. And again, it will be tidy. Because this edge here of this other layer that's on top, I want to keep as gold, so I don't want to paint over that by mistake. And the cloth sort of, the way they've sculpted it, wraps round. 
So I'm going to get nice and neatly fill that in. And again here on this side. Nice and neatly fill it in. So you have something like that and then underneath fill that in as well. There you go. So it's starting to look good now. It's starting to uh, fill in nicely. All right, so here we go, techless blue. Again, using the same brush. And it's this uh, flesh here I'm looking to fill in. So nice and neatly to where the, the chest armor comes up. That's where the flesh will go up to, like so. And this will eliminate a whole chunk of the gold and it'll, you'll really start to get a, a feel of the miniature and how it's going to turn out. Being careful on the forearm here because you've got a metallic band that wraps all the way around. So again, nice and tidy. It's all sculpted for you so you can see where to go. But it will take a bit of practice to get this right here. And up around the neck, up to the horns, and then uh, the face. There's an area I've missed with the, you've probably seen it now that I'm working on this area, there's an area I've missed with the celestial grey, and that's the beak. So we'll just remember to fill that in just a moment, but I'll do the rest of this head here. It's really starting to give an idea of the layout of this model. So it can be hard to differentiate everything when it's all in gold. But as you gradually start to put the colours on, it all comes together. So just going to carry on working round, then nice and neat up to the to the brown here. Uh, then it will be his hands and so on, uh, his legs as well, as high up as they go, you know, all the way up to here. So there's that to do as well. So it's a fair bit, I'll keep going. And then I'll also fill in the celestial grey, the beak area. Okay, that's done. So you see, you're, you're really starting to get an idea of how the model's going to turn out now with that blue done. And I've worked it all the way around. You can see, you just sort of logically follow around, just follow up to these plates on his legs, just there and around the back. Sort of stops just there. Uh, I've gone down to about the ankles because we can use purple down here. If you look at the the artwork the Games Workshop supply, there's all varieties. Some have purple, some don't. I'm just universally just going to give them all purple sort of ankles and up the legs. Uh, so uh, we'll do that next. The hands I've done all the way around. I filled in the beak area. The beaks sort of vary in size as well, but again, just give them a coat of that uh, celestial grey. And just be nice and neat here so the finger across the trigger of the, the pistol all just picked out nice and tidy. So really starting starting to come together well. Same with the purple and again, stay with the same brush here, the size two. Uh, sort of standard size brush for games workshop. If you're using those brushes, um, we're just gonna fill the feet in with the purple. So what I'm doing is going around the foot first of all, going nice and tidy to make sure that's all correct. The little hooves, we're going to do black, so you can leave those. And then I do want to, to blend this, so I'm just going to wash the brush out so that it's damp, and then just blend in the wet paint at the edge. Not too much water. And there's not enough paint, just add some in. There we go. You're going to highlight this all later, it doesn't have to be too tidy, but just a general blending in like so. This is the uh, Xerus purple here by the way. Again going around the foot. Like so. Again I'm not going to be too fussed about making this really neat because you're going to highlight over it again anyway with both the blue and the purple but just a general uh, starting that process of merging those two together. Doing an abrupt line that you might be able to see later on. The only other area uh, you might want to, uh, you're going to do the purple, uh, will be on uh, the mane if they have feathers or tentacles. They have like these octopus tentacle things here at the back. I fade those out and do them in purple as well. I'm going to use the same finish as we do on the feet just to, because there is variety here in this pack. And also some of them come with, let's have a look here, uh, feathers. Like so, again, uh, purple here and then merging it in, uh, watering it down to fade those out to get that kind of result. Uh, just there, same process. 
So that's that done. The next colour is the silver. So you just follow in the uh, example on the artwork there of where the silver goes. Uh, and you're just looking to fill that in. Again, you want it to be neat now. Uh, and it's all the areas which is going to be next to the gold. So the teeth of this chainsaw uh, is going to be silver. So just run the brush around. See that picked out? And then just roll it over. Catch it from behind. And then the, the inside part of this, the trim is in gold, uh, but the inside bodywork here is in silver. So you do want to be neat. And you're just looking to fill this in. Like so. This is a, a, a nice aspect to this paint scheme. I do like the picking out the gold and the silver separately. So that's that chainsaw done there. Uh, then this little horn bit here sticking out, do that in silver. Also do the other one. Also do the end. The end bit and the handle. I've seen the handle done in the artwork there. Uh, there's, I'm not sure the process, I, I just do it silver. Just to save a bit of time, I can't see any point in going a bit ornate on that, there's no need to. And just turn the chainsaw over just to make sure I've got it on both sides. Uh, then on the arm plate here, it's the inner metal plate is silver and the edge is the gold trim. And just being careful because there is a gold etched design that comes down and then just rotating around and filling in the plate from the other side. Like so. And do that on the other side. Uh, the chest plate's the same, there's a little bit up here at the top. The inside plate is silver. The outside is this gold. Flip them around. Chest plate's the same. Inside design is silver. The edge trim is gold. Just going to work that around. Same with the leg pads. Outside trim gold. Inside plate is silver. Let's work on that. And the pistol as well. Just follow the reference there. Uh, but the magazine inside bit is silver. The trim is gold, uh, the chamber of the auto pistol and the endy bit as well is all in silver. So you're just following the reference along this inside bit here as well and the end bit in silver. So I'm just going to uh, keep going here and get this all filled in. So that's that done because the silver picked out. We're actually making very good progress now uh, with these base colours. A bad and black then to do the hooves. You'll see them there right at the bottom of the base. I'm not going to do anything fancy with them because you're hardly going to see them, but I do want to pick them out here with the black. It'll be nice and tidy. Just the very edge of that. Picked out like so. And that is about it for the black. There's straps here on the face. Um, two straps that hold this face plate in position. There's no point in picking those out yet because you're going to be doing the highlights with the blue and so on. So I'll leave those for now. We'll add the black uh, to that later on as a finishing touch. We've done the silver way around. Uh, the dagger blade just there. Uh, the inside, the edge plate is in gold. The inside plating is in silver. So you just, you can pick and choose, but uh, it's quite logical really. Looking for the gold trim to leave that and then fill in the areas of the silver again silver plate as I mentioned earlier on uh, just there and the gold trim so just work your way all the way around it'll take a while but um, it's well worth doing it's a nice result that you get at the end once the washes and highlights are done so uh, I'll take the warpstone glow next and that's for the little gems there's a few of them around just... so anywhere where there's a gem uh, it's quite again quite logical where they are there's one just here on the inside of the chainsaw I'll just fill that in with the green. There's one just... Uh, there's sort of gems dangling down. You'll, you'll see them, they'll have a gold trim and then a gem in the middle. There's one just here. And roll it round. Just do the opposite side as well. And that gem. They're mostly around the dagger and the chainsaw and the waist area. That's about it. There's not much to that at all. So that's that dump. Nice little touch of gems, they look great uh, once they're done. A Shabti Bones next. 
the shapty bone. It's little skulls. Sometimes they're dangling down at the side of the hip. In this case, they're incorporated into the knee plate. I'm gonna pick these out of the shabti bone. Again, keeping the gold trim, but the actual skull I'm gonna pick out this with a shabti bone here. And then we'll shade that later, so filling in the eye sockets. Like so. There's one there, and then there's one on the other side. Just coming in from another angle. And that's it, that's looking good. There is a, a skull type thing on top here. I'm not gonna bother with that, on top of the pistol. That can be just done in gold. Uh, no problem at all. all. Right, so we're gonna go into the washes now. So your base colors are all there, and the model's nicely structured now. Um, I'm gonna use, I've got an old large brush here, but it's, it's quite worn out. Sort of that kind of size you're after. Uh, and we're gonna use the Drakenhof Nightshade. Now, this is the blue shade, uh, and for this we're gonna shade the flesh, like so, and also the horns. Now with the flesh, uh, you, you don't want to get a big build up of this wash. So I'm keeping it quite thin, I just wanna knock it down a shade, but I don't want to get uh, darkened recesses that are very strong dark blue, because it won't look right later on. Uh, so I'm just being careful just to drain out all the spare, keeping it nice and uh, a sort of a thin wash, don't it building up in big puddles. So you can see it just knocking down that shade. And look what it does to the horns here. Just shades those in really nice and brings up that nice blue because they're looking quite stark, that original celestial grey, but you add in this blue. And again, don't want to go too strong on the shade here. Don't want to leave too much recess behind. So just working around. Being careful not to go onto the golden areas. Getting in right in behind the, the ear, back of the ear. The eye socket. The beak. Uh, letting it build up a little bit inside the mouth. To shade that in nicely, that can be nice and dark. And then all the way up to the arm plate on the chest. Working around, but not letting it build up too strong. By uh, letting big puddles of it form. So just keeping it quite thinned out. This side. Up to that main. You don't need to fill the main in. That's that, and then down to the legs. Again, being careful not to cross over onto the plate. And across all the purple, doesn't matter. That'll shade that nicely for us. No problem at all. It's down onto the purple. You can go over the hoof as well, no problem. And then up the side of the leg. And then around. Like so. Uh, the other area is carefully the hands. Not going too heavy, but making sure the insides of the fingers, in between the fingers, gets a good dose of that shade to fill those in. Just from behind here and around, just make sure I catch all the fingers in that shade. I'm quite happy with how he's come out there, it's looking pretty good. Whilst that's drying, next is the Drakari Violet. We can do that because this purple's not going to interfere with the blue, it's in a different area. It's anywhere you've done the silver. So, uh, the chain sword, filling in this silver here, being careful not to get it onto the gold. Filling in the silver. I love putting the purple strand to this, all of it, even the, the uh, teeth on the chainsword here. And behind the chainsword, uh, the chest plate here, in purple, the leg plates. Got some on the skull, I didn't mean to. 
working around in here, fill this in in the purple, it shades it nicely back onto the chest plate it's the dagger now the arm plates can be done in the purple Onto the chest plate going all the way around. That shades it in real nice. Do like it's a nice touch that purple, even on the pistol. Can do that in the purple as well. It's not the usual dumb thing, you should use like a known oil or something dark, but because these are so weird, these models I think the purple is gonna match in just nice. Shading the butt there, a the bit sticking out the back, a bit of the handle. A tiny little bit. Yep, yeah, it's easily forgotten. There's that bit there in the purple as well. Arm plate. And just checking over. It's no need to do the purple legs. They're fine because you've used solid purple there anyway. I'm just going around here making sure. Got everything. There is that in between the loincloth here. Like so. These silvery bits. I mean, almost when you get this shade done, I'd say you'd be tabletop ready there. That's looking good for the tabletop already. But uh, there he is, just checking to make sure I've got all the silver. No, just the inside plate on the legs here. Both sides. And that's it. So that's that picked out. So you've got one more shade after this. That's the Agrax Earth Shade. We'll use that to finish off the gold trim, uh, the loincloth, and also any skulls that you have uh, as well. But uh, other than that, we're looking in good shape again, sort of around the halfway stage. We'll let this dry entirely, uh, and then we'll put the uh, uh, Agrax Earth Shade on next. So Agrax Surf Shade then, All right, basically it's the golden areas uh, and the skulls, like here. So this skull can be filled in now, that just shades that nicely. And then the gold trim, you have to be ultra fussy because some of it's so fine, uh, you don't want it bleeding out onto the purple, so I wouldn't get too hung up on it. If you've used the purple, that's helped to shade it anyway. Um, so there's this area on the chainsaw I want to fill in and just on top and then this end of the chainsaw around the other side I'm not being too fussy, just areas that I can get some shade onto if I can top of the head crest here just where the bolts are So, around the chest there's a large area of gold, all little bits going on. Do you want to get a shade onto the green, the green gems, you want to get a shade onto that to knock them down a tone. Around behind the dagger, the end of the dagger, behind the chainsaw on this side. Shade that all in. Got the other skull. And then the loincloth. Both sides. And this loincloth at the back. Like so, so that's that filled in. Quite happy with how this is going so far. They're nicely lined up to do some uh, highlights. There's one more little thing you can do, and that's the horns. You see the horns in the artwork? You see the way they, they fade off? They're lighter here and they fade off to dark here at the top. And I've tried to replicate that here on this one. 
So it's just a case of some Abaddon Black watered down. I'm just going to apply that on now. So I know I've got gold tips on this, so I can't go all the way up. But I want to put some Abaddon Black to about here. Going neat up to this gold. And my brush is damp, so it's actually fading out so quite naturally as I angle the brush down. That's just filling that out there. Like so. I'll just do the other side. It's not ultra, ultra solid black. Plenty of the detail is still showing through, but it's severely knocking it down tone. That's a watery version. I've got a bit more bright. Uh, pigment here at the top, at the very, very top. Let's keep working at it with a brush, just to get that tone in there going all the way around. Quite happy with that. Something like that, that's ready for the final highlight. A bit later on. So that's all the shading and the wash is done. I'm going to let him dry entirely uh, and then we'll start picking out the final colours. Alright so uh, I'm going to do the blue first of all. This is perhaps the, the, the more time consuming part and the more difficult to get this right. Uh, I tried doing a, originally tried doing a, a dry brush uh, and it's very messy and you don't really pick out the detail very well. Uh, if you try to really neatly paint the edges, it looks a bit too stark and a bit too strong. So it's, what we're doing is like a damp, dry brush. I'm not sure what to call it here, but you're just looking to use the brush, and you're just looking to drag it along uh, the design that's already there. Some areas are going to get filled out, uh, which don't have, have too strong sort of crevices, and then the stronger area is just going to be left behind. You're sort of dragging the brush around, going with the flow of the muscle here uh, on this model. So the first colour is techless blue. You can't really do this in, in one strong shade. So you're going back to your techless blue. And I'll show you on this chest, so not too much paint. And I'm not looking to finely paint this here, but instead just to drag the brush across. So I know the chest, I'm going to drag it across the chest and then it leaves the crevice in between nicely shaded. A little bit of the rib cage that's down there, just pick that out. I'm trying to resist uh, doing a, a weak dry brush. We're also trying to resist chiseling out the detail. That's the cheek. Just there. So the main shaded area is going to get left behind. The other area is just going to get painted back over again. And I found that if you go too strong with your shade, it's a very dark blue, and then as it gets lighter, it just looks wrong. It's, it's too extreme a shade going on. Now I'm just dragging the brush over the top of these, these muscle groups here on his arm, leaving the shading in between. Something like that. So find it, it takes practice. This brush is kind of damp at the moment, but not wet that it's going to bleed everywhere. And then now just going around the neck, across the back onto this muscle, which is all smooth. So I'm just going to repaint it, leaving the shaded areas. Then just picking out these muscles here at the back. Like so, I don't think that's too untidy looking. It's sort of neatness, but then being faded at the same time. I think this bit sticking out is near, so I'm just going to paint that in the techless blue. Uh, then this muscle here on this arm. It's just practice, that's why it's good to do batches. You get good at the first couple, and then you can, you'll be good at the other eight or so, or however many you decide to do. Just filling in this muscle here. Again, just sort of directing the brush in, like so. 
and then the muscle groups here on the arm. Like that. Then nice and tidy on the hands. So the whole hand front just there, then taking the brush sideways, just clipping the tops of the fingers to highlight them and leaving the shade in between. Go around the back and just catching the thumb. Then on the other side, back of the hand, the whole thing. And then turn the brush sideways and just clipping the tops of the fingers. Then down at the legs, uh, the top part painted as, as described earlier. So just pulling the brush across and then just flicking the brush like so. Flicking the brush partially onto the purple, not, all, not too far down because you're going to put the purple highlight coming up the leg as well. So again, uh, just be aware of that. Just filling in the muscle group here on the leg. A little bit down to the purple. Just strengthen the area. Rotating round and that's come out pretty good. So that's that blue, that's a nice zangle colour. Then, the loaf and blue next. So again, looking to highlight. I'm just going to put a little bit onto the palette here. Just looking to highlight what I've done. Uh, so similar kind of process. Just picking out the knuckles and fingers now on the hand. Like so. And again, onto the chest, same kind of idea, but not as much this time. Just giving you an idea of how I go about doing it. I'm gonna not be as strong with this highlight. Got too much paint on the brush here, I'm just removing some of it. And then up onto the neck, that's too watery. Again, it's just a case of, of practice. So definitely want that cheek picked out and the ear and the eye socket. And then the shoulder. Again, catching these muscle groups again. Something like that. Back of the arm, catching all those muscles, the elbow, and then the back of the neck here, this strong neck, like a horse's head type neck these things have, uh, like that. And then the big muscle that's on his back. But not catching all of it, maybe just the top part of it there. So just a bit. So again, highlighting, but not as much as you did with the Teclas Blue. In the ear, the eye socket, and then picking out the muscles on the arm. Yeah, it's a nice sort of otherworldly blue going on here, so it's looking good. And then the muscle. So we'll do the directions, the strokes of the brush. Like so, let's come out okay. Then with the hand, I want to catch these fingers and knuckles. Then with the legs, just catch the main muscles. Leave the rest in shade and then a tiny flick down the leg here. Just to highlight it. Again, it's not really a dry brush, it's just this damper dry brush you're using. But I'll just give you a tidier look. Dry brush, you can end up all over the place. Um, so 
so I've gone for more of a brush strokes approach instead. But just direction of just catching the, the main highlights there out of that loaf and blue. But that's the final result. That's the key bit to get right, but quite happy with how that's come out. Uh, so yeah, you have gone over these little spines and so on. We'll pick those out with purple uh, later on to look something like that. But uh, that's those two. Uh, there, so that's brought up to that standard. It takes a while, it's the one you're going to work on a bit, but it's great to get that bit finished. So that's that highlight done. Next is the gold. I'm taking the uh, the burnished gold, which is the auric armor gold, and I want to make a silvery version of that. So I've, I'm putting some of it onto the palette here, taking some rune fang steel and mixing it together. I'd say maybe 50-50, if not a bit more of the rune fang steel. You'll see the color as it goes on here. This is just one extreme highlight we're going to do onto this gold. So uh, you just paint this on. Now I'm looking to catch the edges is the primary aim. So I'm going to catch this edge. Like so, it's all right. Catch the edge of that. And down here as well. I'm going to just catch a little bit of the edge of this gold trim. I'm not going to rigidly stick to, to painting all of it, I just want to catch the, some of it just to make it glisten. On his chest plate, that golden edge runs around. I'm trying to be very neat here because I don't want to go onto the blue that I've already done, which I just have <laughs> by accident. So, just wet a brush quickly and then just wash it away, just stab it away. I'll show that to you on camera because you do make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes with painting, so that's just a quick way of removing that if you get to it quickly. Then I'm now doing the edge of all this gold here in this colour. Dagger, end of the dagger, top of the dagger. These uh, fire plates here I'm picking out. the edge of these fire plates. Now running underneath. Now the pistol. Again, just looking to catch the edges. Like so. On top. catching the top of these spikes here on top on the end of the horns. So I'm just going to work my way around. Uh, there's still a fair bit to do here, so I'm just going to pick out all the gold edging uh, just to highlight that up. That's the kind of uh, results you can expect. All right, so that's that highlighting done. Really lifting in there, looking nice. Looking now to take the uh, iron breaker, the silver. That we started with and just looking to re-highlight the silver work so uh, you've got the purple already in place uh, it's not entirely destroyed we're just looking to pick out the main areas again that just lifts that like so tips some of that purple will remain so the tips of the chainsaw just tidies the whole thing up sharpens it up makes it nice and glistening still keeps that sort of purple tinge to it because the purple's in all the recesses there so it does show through just the tip of the chain sword a bit of the armor plate but I want to leave some purple so just a little bit of it there this is your final highlight really for this silver the blade here of the dagger bit of the fire plate areas you're going to struggle to reach then just don't worry about reaching them some some of the tips here on the pistol just underneath 
a little bit of the fight plates, a little bit here on the chest plate just to tidy it up a little bit, but leaving a lot of the purple in place. Gonna take a bit more, just gonna have a bit more water to my mix here. Bit of the fire plate. This isn't gonna take too long. The arm plate here. And then, yeah, I'm gonna try and touch a little bit onto the plate that's on his nose. One. And two, just a bit, but still that purple remains uh, just on that arm plate here. Pick that out. A little bit at the back of the pistol. And that's looking not too bad. Yeah, so that's picked out nice. That really does add a nice bit of glistening and enhancement to the model at just there. Next is your Shabti bone in white. So you're taking your Shabti bone and we're uh, repainting the skulls here. In this case, this particular model, it's on the knees. So one skull just there, and then one skull here. Like so, just a little bit went into the eye socket, just gonna remove that. And then taking some Shabti bone, but mostly white. Just making an off-white color. A touch of a Shabti bone to it. I'm gonna do a final highlight, so just along the nose, top of the head, and around the eye sockets. Just to pick that out. Like so. And on the other side. Like that. That's that picked out, so nice and quick. Fine detail brush next. Uh, and that's these gems. Uh, we'll just see if I can get as close as I can. I'll try and pick out an easy one. So here's this gem. It's already been shaded for you. Uh, the uh, the green that we had earlier on. Uh, the Warpstone Glow has been shaded with the Agrax Earth shade. Bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna put in uh, the Moot Green. Like so. Bottom right hand corner that goes, about a third of it. Just filled in with that. And in the top left corner is a dot of white. Like so. And just repeat that on all of those uh, gems. Now I've, the brush I've used here is a triple zero. Uh, it's a very nice fine tipped uh, brush there. A fine detail brush from Games Workshop. A good tip on it. Again nice and damp so that paint just flows on nicely. I'll just go around and complete all of those uh, gems. There's not many of them, and you could get you could get away with not doing them, but I, I like introducing that green in there. Just adds another area of interest, and it's not too much effort to do them nicely. Back to our regular standard brush. Uh, so we'll go for. Uh, I'm actually going to use a size one brush here. So it's like a detail brush, I'd imagine, for Games Workshop. Uh, you're looking to pick out uh, the loincloth now, so. I just repaint it with the corn red, but leaving the shaded folded corners uh, filled in. So just looking to repaint that bit and that edge. Not the extreme edge, most of it, but not the crumpled areas. Like so. Something like that. And then a little bit behind. I won't do an extreme highlight right behind there, but just to tidy it up. And then I take uh, the corn red, mix it with white, some white, as much or as little as you want, depending on how strong you want this highlight shade to be. And you just nice and tidy want to pick out your extreme edge. So uh, this right at the very edge, I'll pick that out and the tip of this fold and this fold and the last fold like so around the front this fold this fold a 
there. Happy enough with that. It's not a major feature of this model, uh, but I like to, to get that paint in. It's another colour that's been introduced, and again, quite easy to, to get that finished off. The model's really coming on here. We've not got long to go until uh, this Zangul is finished. Right. Next is the Troll Slayer Orange. Uh, I've got this. I'm going to use this brush here. It's a base coat brush, quite worn out, so it looks like that. I've dampened it. And I have some of the Troll Slayer Orange. Loading the brush up, not too much, something like that. I'm looking to catch this mane here. I'll start at the very top. And I'm just because it's nicely sculpted, I can just literally drag the brush across the top of the detail and it will pick it out for me. And again, that's very quick. And you get an immediate effect. Not too worried about these bits here, I'll pick those out by hand, that'll take a while. Uh, but this mane here is a nice dark shade, so you can go straight on with the orange. Again, just being careful not to overload the brush, don't want to fill the detail in. And we'll just do this side. And again, the orange and the blues all clashing, it looks great. Real dazzling display of colours going on here. And I want to attract attention to these angles in the game. I want the opponent to waste a lot of firepower trying to take them out. They're only 70 points for unit of 10. And so I want them to be a nice distracting unit, so brighter the better for these. So that's that. Uh, also the same technique to catch these frills here at the bottom of the uh, uh, loincloth just here. And around behind. Same process. Then I take some of the orange, mix mix it with some of the flash gets yellow, make an even brighter version and just catch the very very tips. So like that. And again just the very tips here of this mane. Just to really brighten it up. Nice. And it's not all of it, it's just sort of the, the tips here, the edges, extreme bits sticking out like that. Now what I've just shown you, that same technique will be the same way uh, that you do, let's just find an example, here, the feathers. So uh, purple, uh, you highlight with the purple uh, first of all, which I'll show you how to do in just a moment. Once that's done, you then mix up that orange, just catch the very tips of the feathers and the yellow again, mix it with the yellow and catch the very tips. Uh, just there, I'll see if there's an example of it here on the artwork. Yeah, there is, just like that. See those very tips there? So you're highlighting your purple first of all, then your orange highlight, just like I've shown you on that main, and then very, very uh, fine, uh, the very edges tipped there with the uh, orange and yellow mix. And that's the kind of result you can expect. It looks fantastic. So same process uh, there for the purple feathers on the back of any models that look like that. So that's the main done. I'm just looking to pick out now uh, the orange bits on the skin. Just taking that troll slayer orange and picking those out like so. I, I really want to be neat here. And pick those out. Now I'll go around the whole of the model, but just to show you on the neck there, then later on, again, you mix up your orange and yellow mix. You don't have to do this, but you just catch the very, very tips of these. Just to add one more extreme highlight, just to really make these pop out. You don't have to do this, but I, I think it enhances it. Makes them look a bit more believable. Ah, that's it, nice glow to it now. Like so. So again, I've got the neck to do, there's some on the very top of the arm, and then across the chest as well. So there's a fair few of those, but uh, you sort of, you need to do that just to uh, paint them up properly. But I'll, I'll go around the rest of these and pick them out. Okay, so I've picked that out. That looks something like that. You can also see the eye. That's just the flash gets yellow, just carefully dotted in to pick the eye out. It's nicely sculpted for you, you should be able to do it. 
Just carefully picking that up. I've done it on the other side as well, just in yellow. Don't have to use yellow, you could use orange if you wanted to, or, or green, but I think the yellow, I, I think that matches uh, the what they show you there in the artwork. There he is. A few bits left to go. So the purple here, uh, same process you did with the blue. The original colour first of all, the Xerus purple. That's just to tidy it up. A little bit. You may not even need to bother doing this bit. But just the Xerus purple. And then I take some Xerus purple. Mix it with some white. To make a final extreme highlight. Just going to lose some of the colour onto the tissue there. And then it's a bit too strong. So I'm going to add some more purple back into it. And then just looking to pick out that final highlight. So just run that over, picking out that extreme highlight. I've already done some of it here. But just the extreme edge. And just going part of the way up the leg. And then around just the extreme areas, but leaving most of it shaded in. To finish that off, and that looks something like that. That just is a nice finish there. To have that purple on the bottom, just different colour shaded and looks great. That's that finish. Almost finished the more than our last few bits to do. Alright, so some bits to finish off. Remember I uh, said earlier about the straps that come down. You'll see them sculpted on the side of the head. And then just check the artwork for the reference. But I'm just going to pick those out with the uh, black here. So there's one here. And there's one here that sort of separates the skin from the beak. Like that. They are black in the artwork. I'm not going to highlight them anyway at all. There's plenty of other highlighting work that's been done. Just going to pick those out in the black and then just around the other side. One and two. Like so. So that's that done. Next, I'm taking the Celestra Grey and I'm going to re highlight the horns here. So I have some paint on the brush, and I'm looking to uh, paint here carefully. Remember, it's brighter at this end, and then stretched off into the distance, just going to catch the edge, like so. It's more of almost almost nothing here at this end, just really just picking out uh, the extreme edges and then further down towards uh, the this direction, looking to make that quite strong. Like so, something like that. And again, that's that damp dry brush sort of technique where you're just directing the highlight here. So I'm running the brush along the top of this edge and the other edge and the other edge and then around the skull here just moving the brush around to highlight like so and I'll just catch the back of that the other side but that's the priority but you see you get that that nice strong highlight along there uh, I then it's quite strong on the the artwork so I can strengthen that by taking a little bit of celestial grey and then adding some white to it to make a final extreme highlight I'll take out a lot of this paint though so I don't want it too strong and just picking out an extreme highlight here in which case will just be the very ridge very tip that's about it that's about as much as I'm going to do on that but that's come out quite nice that's that highlight just there done that's a nice finish actually to that model so uh, you, you also have just taken some sort of regular Celestra grey and thinning it out uh, the beak here, and again, you could spend ages. I just take, cut the, uh, just pick out the edge of the, the mouth, 
It's like where the teeth would be. Just the outline of that. I just run the side of the brush and just catch that. And you see that just highlights that nicely without too much effort. And again, that side. And then the other side. And that seems to be enough. There, let's pick that out. Quite nice. That may not be exactly as you see in the artwork. Generally, it's the same, uh, but that is a pretty quick technique and a decent enough uh, result just there. But uh, that's that uh, Zangle looking pretty good. I'm just looking over the model here to see if there's anything else. I think that's about it. The hooves are in black. I'll leave those. You can pick them out if you want to, but they're not very significant. So I'll leave them. That saves time. And I think we have finished. All right. So there it is. That's the painting done. Give yourself a nice bright uh, model there. It's not, it's not been too bad. We've painted this up pretty quick. I mean, it's going to take you a while because it's obviously going to be bigger units. Units of 10, 15, and uh, that kind of size. So that's going to take up your time. Uh, but not too bad as miniatures just There's a lot going on with this model. Loads of different colours and so on. And so I think this technique is uh, sort of not too bad at speed to get some pretty nice uh, results. So that's him finished. Uh, we'll do the basing here, uh, we'll put the final flock to finish off. Right, so I've got some PVA, I've put it onto my uh, palette just here, and usually I put on the, uh, the grass first, or the big tufts, I'll take one of my grass tufts, just pull it off of the paper, and then dip it into the PVA, like so, so there's a good amount of glue, and then just choose a spot, I'm going to go just here at the back. And you just plant it and push it down. That's got a nice big blob of glue on it to help hold that in place. Then take a rough old brush. That's moved a little bit, doesn't matter. Just reposition that. There's a bit of a fiddle. Just trying to plant it in position. I'm trying to add a bit more flock around it to blend it in a bit with this other uh, dead grass flock I've got here. And then I'm just going to do a patch that runs all the way through to the other side. Like so. If there's an area on the on the base where you have caused damage and some of the sand is chipped off, or there's a blob of paint, then just cover it over the PVA and put the flock on it to cover it up. So I'm just going to drop this dead grass on top here, here at the front. So there's a, a stack of it on top here. A nice tap to help it settle. And then not too violently because you don't want your tuft coming off, um, but just tapping off the excess. And then blowing the edge, or blowing the, the spare grass, and then just using your thumb or finger just to wipe away the spare from the base. You want the base nice and clean for spraying your varnish in a moment. I just sorting that out, tidying it up, and it's ready. Blowing off the excess, making sure there's none on the actual artwork itself on the actual model, and then he's ready for varnishing. So give him a coat of varnish uh, to finish off. That's your purity seal, uh, and that will seal in the base, the flock, and then all of the uh, paintwork as well uh, to give that nice bit of protection. I use purity seal. It's okay. Uh, the modern stuff, the latest stuff in Goes Workshop, it can be a bit flat matte, which isn't good for your metallics. So if you know of another varnish that's more of a satin finish, then that'll work well for your metallics here, because you do want to try and keep those nice and shiny if you can. Um, but there he is, coat of varnish, and then this Zengor will be finished. So that's the basing done, coat of varnish to finish off, and the model looks something like that. There's the other one uh, from earlier that we saw at the start. So. There they are, looking pretty good. I think the basin really finishes them off. It's nice to have that flock on there. And it's the same general process uh, here. This is my Mauler Fiend, the second one. Just to show you, I'll stick these on, the magnetised lasher tendrils. And I smashed up. Well, I'm just dragging all there at the front. I've just finished basing him as well. I'm really trying to push to get this Thousand Sons army up and running and let them loose. <laughs> against anybody 
uh, on the channel. They'll happily fight anybody. But uh, that's the second model thing. I just raised him up, used some real stones here, and then raised the model up just to make him different from the other model thing I have, and then gave him uh, some spare parts here from my uh, Librarian Dreadnought for Blood Angels, and so I used that uh, just to make up this smashed up Dreadnought. But there it is. That's uh, the tutorial then for Zangors. Entirely different, really, from uh, Rubik Marines. Different starts, them entirely different colour. Uh, all sorts of different colours being used, and so uh, I've shown you in this tutorial how to paint those up. There it is, that's start to finish, how to paint Zengors uh, for your Thousand Sons Army. Keep a look out for other, uh, or for more uh, in-depth painting tutorials on the Plus channel. Check out the ones that are already there. There's some, uh, some key ones already up for a lot of the factions already available on the Plus channel. And then keep a look out for more content, more battle reports on the way on the Plus channel as well. But there it is. How to paint Zangor's uh, painting tutorial here. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.